For those of you who have just updated to the 2014 version of Adobe Muse, you're probably pretty excited about the 100% page width slideshows that we can now create. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with this new feature, uh, please go ahead and watch my previous tutorial. I'll put a link here in the annotation so you can click and watch that first, because in a way this tutorial is uh, sort of an extension of that tutorial. So what I want to talk about today is overcoming a little problem that you might run into if you're creating 100% page with slideshows that contain information. Uh, you can see what I have on my screen right now is a set of banners sent to me by a client for use on their website as a slideshow that runs across the top. The issue is this can't really work as a 100% page with slideshow because if you watch as I scale my browser see the information gets cut off because the way a 100% page with slideshow works is it needs to scale but remain in proportion by getting taller as it gets wider. Uh, definitely an issue if there's information because that gets cut off and then you end up looking silly. So to overcome that issue I've got an idea and it seems to be working so I'm going to show you guys what I did here. Um, I've titled this slideshow stack and that is because we're going to create a slideshow and we're going to create a composition that cycles the info separately from one another. Uh, so you can see here I've got a few little pieces of info and if I open up my page in the browser here you can see that the photos are cycling and I've just got the info sitting down here not doing anything. This is just set aside, by the way. The, <laughs> this is not the final product. But the idea is I've established a 100% page with slideshow. And again, if you're not sure how I arrived at this, please watch the previous tutorial in the annotation that popped up earlier. Um, and the idea is that the photo's fine if it gets cut off. The photo's absolutely fine. It gets a little bit cut off at the top and the bottom, but these photos happen to be... Uh, okay when they're cut off in the top at the top and the bottom. If your photos aren't okay being cut off at the top and the bottom, then you will have a very difficult problem to overcome with a 100% page with slideshow. Because um, bottom line is your picture will get taller as your audience's browser gets wider. So now that I've established my slideshow here, I've got to figure out how to get the information on top. And that's going to happen by using a tool that's already built into Muse that's been here forever. It's going to be on the widgets library panel which is separate from the library panel, so don't get those mixed up. The library panel is where you'll find things that you've installed. The widgets library is where you'll find things that came pre-installed with Adobe Muse. So I'm looking for compositions, and inside compositions I'm going to create a blank composition. And I'm just going to drag this down here underneath, so that way you, ca you guys can see the separate layers uh, separately from one another. I'm not going to stack everything up yet. So when you drop this in here, it's asking me a few questions. I'm not going to deal with those yet. We're going to come back to those. Uh, I'm going to start by cleaning up some of the things that I don't need here. Um, at the bottom of a composition, you have these little buttons that let you click through. It's just like a slideshow, but it's a slideshow that we can put information inside of, text boxes and shapes and things like that. Uh, I don't need three triggers. In fact, I'm going to delete the second two of them. And then this last trigger that's here, uh, I don't want to see it. You guys might want to see it. You might want to allow your audience to click through. But I want this to play automatically, and I want it to play automatically so that the info and the photos stay together and match. My photos aren't related, and my info kind of relates to the photos, so you guys will be able to tell if they match or not, so you can hold me accountable. So this is now visible, and I want it to be no longer visible, and it has different states to it because it will change in appearance when the viewer hovers over it and when they click on it to select it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go up here where it says trigger active and click on the word active. We want to use this little trash can to delete the active state and then we want to go to mouse down make sure that's deleted which it already is. We want to go to rollover and delete that as well and then we want to go to normal and we want to set the normal state to have no stroke so I'm gonna set the stroke here to zero and the fill I'm gonna click and set the fill color to the white box with the red line running through it which is a transparent fill that's no fill at all so this effectively makes it invisible and it won't become visible even if they click on it on accident or move their cursor over it uh, when they're viewing the website so now we've got our invisible trigger area let's set the target area to now be the right size and make it invisible I'm gonna start by making it wider because I do want this to be the full width of my website now the full width of the website yes but the full width of the browser no uh, I do not want this to scale with the browser because I don't want the info to get cut off. I just want it to stay put at the width of my website, which currently is 960 pixels wide. 
and you guys can see here that that it's on a grid to make it easier for me to line things up if you guys want this grid uh, working on a grid system is by far the easiest way to lay things out on a page uh, you can download this grid template for free from museresources.com all kinds of free downloads there for you so now that I've got this established, I can still see it. You guys can see that this is a gray box. I don't want it to be a gray box because I want to put info in there and I want to see only the info. Essentially, I need this composition to facilitate changing from one set of info to another, but I don't want to see the thing. I don't want to see a background. So getting rid of the stroke, getting rid of the fill, and now that's transparent as well. With the target area, there is not going to be an active and rollover state, so you don't have to worry about that. It should just say normal, and then go ahead and get rid of the fill, get rid of the stroke. So now I have a clear, empty composition, a transparent composition. So now I'm going to take my first bit of information, and I'm going to drop it in there. You can see that as I drag over it, it turns blue, showing that this will be inserted into the composition. I'm going to drop that in there. I'm going to now hit the little plus sign underneath to create a second sort of slide in this composition. And I'm going to click and drag this in there. And I'm going to click the plus sign again to add another slide. There we go. And now I'm going to drag this up and add my third bit of information here. So now that I have all three bits of information in here, uh, if you're not sure if you've done it or if you're not sure if you have three, uh, you should be able to mouse over and still see the triggers and you can click from one to the next uh, or you can go to the layers panel and by expanding the layers panel you'll find your composition. You can expand your composition and you'll be able to switch from trigger to trigger and from target to target. So if you can't, if you can't find your triggers because they're transparent, um, there's always the layers panel. That goes for slideshows as well. You can always browse the content of a slideshow from the layers panel, uh, which I wish I knew from the beginning. That's a, that's a really handy thing when you, when you get into more complicated uh, slideshows and compositions. So now that I've got my composition created, I'm going to click outside of it so the whole thing uh, sort of gets glued together. And I can now drag this up onto my slideshow. Now, this is a little too tall. Uh, but that's okay. I can always click inside and shrink it down a little bit. I can move these triggers up here if I want to. Uh, it's okay if the triggers and the target overlap because, again, the triggers are transparent. So that's not a big deal. So the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that these bits of information change at the same speed as my slideshow. Do I know how quick my slideshow changes? No, I have no idea. I forget. It's been like 10 minutes. So I'm going to click on my little blue circle up here. And I'm going to remind myself, here we go, my transition speed is one second and my autoplay is three and a half seconds. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. I'm going to go two and a half seconds and transition speed, I'll go 0.8. Now it's most important that I remember this. It's not most important that I choose any specific numbers. But I'm also going to make sure that it doesn't resume and that swipe is not enabled because I don't want the viewer to be able to change the image. I, I, I want the image to change on its own and on its own only. So now I'm going to go back to the composition that I put on top of the slideshow. I'm going to hit the little blue circle to bring up the composition options. And I want to make sure that it will autoplay as well. I don't need it to resume after any number of seconds, but I guess it's kind of a non-issue. I'm going to disable swipe and I'm going to hope that people don't accidentally click on these triggers here to change the info manually because those do still exist. They are still clickable. Since the viewer can't see them, they probably won't click on them. But uh, if you want to be absolutely sure that they won't click on them, you could maybe make them really teeny tiny so that way they don't get clicked on. But chances are, if the viewer can't see them, they're not going to click on them. So auto swipe's turned off, so, or swipe, enable swipe is turned off. Uh, auto play is turned on. Those are the two most important things. Uh, and auto swipe, or enable swipe rather, uh, on mobile devices allows people on iPhones, iPads, Androids to swipe their finger across, which they will surely do on accident if you allow them to. That's why I have that turned off. So the next thing is making sure that these numbers match. I think transition speed was 0.8 for the slideshow, and autoplay I believe I had on 2.5. So this looks like it matches. It looks like it matches between the slideshow and the composition. And that's all that matters now that I have them stacked on top of one another. So now I'm going to preview in the browser. There's the first one. Looks like they changed together. No problems. Change together again. Looks like my browser is a little too narrow. But now here's the magic. As I make my browser wider and wider, the image is growing and the image is getting cut off. But the information is being left alone. It's not in the way. And as I make the browser more narrow over here, you can see that the info 
is really staying put so the viewer is not going to have a compromised experience depending on the size of their screen. So I hope you guys like this tutorial. That's really just about it. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions or other applications, please leave comments. And uh, if you guys haven't subscribed already, please subscribe because I'll have more cool stuff coming soon.